Form 4 chapter 10.7, vertex system. So the first most important thing we have to know is how tissue fluid is formed. Now, tissue fluid is basically the fluid that diffuses out from your blood vessel. This is called tissue fluid. So how this fluid actually comes out from the blood is that now once when blood flow from the artery to your blood capillary that time, there's difference in lumen size. So you should know by now artery lumen size is bigger compared to the blood capillaries. So when they suddenly diverge into this blood capillary, converge, sorry, in this blood capillary, it will cause high pressure at this region. So this high pressure will force the blood out. So once the blood comes out, this is called tissue fluid. So around three marks, they will ask you. So first, you could mention the difference of lumen size, which is blood capillary is smaller than artery. So this will cause high hydrostatic pressure. Yeah, you use with high hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end. So arterial is the point between your artery and your blood capillary. So this pressure will then push, force blood plasma out. And it will go into these spaces called intercellular spaces, means the spaces between the cells, cells in the cell. So outside your blood capillaries, basically you have cells here. That's called the intercellular spaces. That's where your tissue fluid will go into. Now, some of you will say, teacher, why is it called tissue fluid? Why when the blood come out already, you don't call it blood anymore? Now, it's because not everything in the blood come out. So there are three things that mainly cannot come out. So as mentioned here, tissue fluid does not contain red blood cells, platelets, and plasma. You can write red blood cells instead of erythrocytes. So why these three things cannot come out? Because they're too fat. They're too large to diffuse through the blood capillary walls. So whenever come out, you will not have red blood cell, for example. So you're not blood anymore because your color is not red. They are actually sort of like colorless. Next, what does the tissue fluid do here? So very simple. They carry out exchange of gases and substance with the body cells. So we learned before blood capillary always carry out gases exchange, right? So the gases, the nutrients all come out already. So besides these three things, right? The other things like oxygen, nutrients like glucose, amino acid, all can come out. And then they exchange the nutrients with the body cells. So now, once they're done, they have to go back to the blood. So that is the main purpose of your lymphatic system, is to help to return this excess tissue fluid. But the tissue fluid is going to return to our blood. Okay, there are two ways tissue fluid go back to the blood. So the first method is very direct. They straight away go back to the venue. So venue is basically the point between the vein and your blood capillary. So just like coming from arterioma. So majority of it, 85% of it, will diffuse into the venue. Why? Is because the pressure here is low. Just now high, I come out. Now it's low, so I can diffuse into here. But however, not everything goes back here. Not all the tissue fluid, around only 85%. Now why? It's because when high go to low that time, eventually they reach an equilibrium. The pressure becomes same already, then the remaining uh, fluid cannot go back inside already because the pressure is same. So the remaining 15% have to use the long way, have to use the long gang, which is your lymphatic, lymphatic system. So this 15% will enter, see all these green color vessels? So that is called your lymphatic capillaries. They are always intersect between your blood capillaries. Right? So the remaining 15% will enter here. As they mentioned, remaining 15% of your tissue fluid diffuses into lymphatic capillaries. Now, once they enter here, we don't call it tissue fluid anymore. We call it limb. And from there, your lymphatic capillaries will merge into a lymphatic vessel. lymphatic vessel. And this lymphatic vessel will eventually connect to two major lymphatic vessels. So it's like many, many small river suddenly merge into these two large river. Hundo xiao he ji xi liang ge da he, right lymphatic duct, thoracic duct. Now, basically, different part of your body, punya lymph will enter into different lymphatic vessel. So as you can see, right lymphatic duct will collect lymph from your entire right upper body, and thoracic duct will collect the lymph from your entire left upper body and your lower body. So we must write this on right lymphatic duct collects lymph from right. Head, neck, chest, and upper limb, which is your arm. And then the left, the one which is your thoracic duct, will collect limb from your the other side, left head, neck, chest, upper limb, your arms again. But now your and also your entire body below ribs, your zenge, xia ban zen. Then these two lymphatic vessels, they will connect the two veins, two blood vessels, called the right subclavian vein and the left subclavian vein. 
Now, once they reach these two veins, right, they basically reach back the blood already because the vein is blood vessel. Now, I agree really successfully, Chen Hui Shi Xue Da, really reach back the blood. So basically, you just have to say, uh, right lymph node transport limbs into the right subclavian vein, and then the thoracic duct transport limb into your left subclavian vein. So this right and left subclavian vein is actually located in your collar collarbone, woman the which then connects back to your heart, and that's how it returns back to your blood, lah. Then your heart will pump blood. Again, lah. So that's how it goes back to the blood. And basically, that's how you explain lah. this is around 10 marks. So this is the full answer you need to mention. And let's look at an example question. Basically, what we just mentioned just now is all actually in this question already. For example, okay, labeling very important. So you need to know how to identify, of course, which vessels which. So first they ask what is X and Y. So X, you can see is in between the blood capillaries. So this is lymphatic capillaries. And this is blood capillaries. Now, for those who still cannot differentiate which is which, right? Okay, it's very simple. Your lymphatic capillaries always is open-ended one. And then your blood capillaries is not open one. Lah. It's enclosed one. Okay, and you also can remember that lymphatic capillaries always is intersect with blood capillaries. The lymphatic capillaries always is jiao cha with the blood capillaries. And then what's the fluid in vessel Q? So once you enter the lymphatic system, your lymphatic capillary limb vessels, right? Yeah, so that thing, that fluid now is called limb. If they point here, then it's tissue fluid. Formation of fluid in vessel Q means how do I form limb? Okay, first you have to mention how tissue fluid is formed first. So the same three points that we mentioned just now, lor, the diameter size different, got high hydrostatic pressure, I force the fluid out. But once I force the fluid out, I only form tissue fluid. So how do I form limb? Is that you have to mention the 15% that enters the lymphatic capillaries forms the limb. So that is the next thing you have to say. 15% tissue fluid diffuse into lymphatic capillaries form that limb. So that is the fourth point. One difference between composition Q and Y, so what's the difference between blood and also your limb? So remember that three things cannot come out. Ah, so you just have to compare mainly these three things are the easiest one. So blood definitely have red blood cell or plasma proteins or platelets. Either one, you just choose one. The reason is because these three are too large to diffuse out of the blood capillary. So that's the explain the difference. So I state the difference here and explain why is there this difference because they cannot come out. That's why your limb, your tissue fluid won't have these three things. And the final question here, describe the relationship between blood circulatory system and lymphatic system means how are these two systems related? Of course they are related because the lymphatic system right completes the blood. Without the lymphatic system right when the tissue fluid keep on flowing out from your blood capillaries or your blood content will get lesser and lesser. But lymphatic system, what does it do? Remember, it helps to return this tissue fluid. So lymphatic system, we will say it complements the blood circulatory system because lymphatic system maintains composition of blood. It means it maintains the blood. It maintains the content in the blood, not letting it become less and less. How does it do so? By returning the tissue fluid that came out. So by returning excess tissue fluids that's inside the intercellular spaces and returning it back to the blood. How does it return it back to the blood? Through mainly the lymphatic system over here. Alright, so that is our lymphatic system. Hope you learned something lah. See you in the next video guys. Bye bye.